Thanks. You know, I guess it's, uh, it's really awesome to be here. I mean, uh, we, uh, when first Olmo kind of spoke to us a little bit about what he wanted to do as far as uh, Tech Tuesday, you know, he invited us out for, for some beers at uh, Roosevelt's, and uh, we had a good time, right? Yeah, an awesome time. And, you know, the whole idea is, you know, uh, was able to, I mean, the idea was that, you know, try to create a startup community in the Valley, you know, try to bring everybody together so we can really just try to, you know, get something. Uh, to build something, right? And I know we've spoken to, well, we've been involved with like a lot of other businesses and we've been involved in a lot of other ventures. Um, and we know that, you know, other cities like, you know, Mission and McAllen uh, are also doing a lot of things that are, I guess, uh, pretty great as far as for fo fostering business and startups. Um, so, you know, we think it's really awesome what almost doing, you know, just being able to try, try and bring all the cities of, you know, the Rio Grande Valley together and try to really start up this uh, startup community. Okay, well, I guess outside of that, uh, so we're a digital creative company. Um, outside of that, uh, I guess our mission statement is that we're a catalyst for innovation. Um, we'll kind of talk about some of the stuff we're doing, our services, show you some examples of projects we've done, and uh, even s some of the like non-commercial projects, which is like philanthropy type events that we've, we've been doing recently. Uh, so to, to talk a little bit about our team, uh, I'm obviously Nathan Villarreal. I'm a co-founder, I'm, I'm one of our developers. Uh, Luis Trevino is a co the co-CEO and also a, one of our lead designers, uh, also lead marketers. Uh, Sarah, uh, well, maybe you guys can introduce yourself. Yeah. Hi, uh, my name's Sarah. I'm the chief creative officer. And uh, one of our team members is in here. Um, his name's Josh Tyree, and he's also a developer and CTO. Yeah. And then, of course, um, Josh. Yeah. Well, Joshua, uh, he has the same name as m me. <laughs> he's my twin brother, so we pretty much look the same. So you guys aren't missing much. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it was pretty short notice, and uh, not the whole, not, like the whole team couldn't be here, so it was just pretty much like, you know, us three, you know, what, let's let's roll with it, let's go for it, right? Yeah. Uh, so that's pretty much like the whole team up there, uh, <laughs> myself, Joshua, Nathan, Sada, and Tyree. Yeah, and uh, th this was uh, this was at the photo booth at the Code Factory, which was an event we did. Um, most of the the, the the people who attended. Were, it was like 60, 60 or so high school students, primarily between sophomores and seniors, and we had like 30 some uh, uh, attendees who were uh, you know, enrolled here at UTPA. And more or less, w it was like the purpose of the event was kind of to get people excited about technology. So we did, uh, we did four, four modules. Um, uh, and and then we, we should go, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that in a couple minutes. All right, do you wanna take this one? Yeah, I mean, so a lot of what we do, I guess just to give you some background, uh, when I was a sophomore in college, 2010, I believe, uh, I started a design company with uh, myself and another friend of mine, you know, really was really passionate about design, but was also really passionate about business. And so I was, I was 21 years old, and I said, yeah, you know, we, could, we can start something. One of my friends and I are like, hey, let's just go ahead and do it, right? And that's kind of where Bridge, I guess the first iteration of Bridge started, which was called the Bridge Design Group. And that lasted for about two years. I graduated in 2012, and then after that, you know, I didn't want to go. I didn't want to get a job because I said, if I get a job, I'm going to be depressed, right? I'm going to hate my life because I've I've never, I've never, I've, ever since I was a little kid. I mean, I guess that's just the way I grew up. Uh, my parents were all about you know entrepreneurship, and I really just wanted that freedom, right? And so just and just to just do my own thing. And so, you know, I continued bridge. I said, I mean, I was freaking out after high school, I mean, after college, and, you know, what am I going to do? Uh, things went out, I mean, things turned out pretty well. Within around six months after graduating, uh, I had known Joshua and Nathan for about four years now. And then we said, hey, like, let's, uh, you know, let's join forces. I mean, we, I, I would already outsource a lot of, uh, like, I guess, development work out to them. And then we say, hey, you know, let, let's join forces. And then this is like the new iteration of our company, which is now Create the Bridge. And so a lot of what we are, I mean, like, like Nathan mentioned, we're a, a, a digital creative agency. Uh, there's a, primarily like three types of services that we offer. Number one is development. Two is just uh, design. So any type of design work for, you know, creating corporate uh, branding images for our companies, et cetera. And then we do a lot of uh, marketing, uh, online marketing, advertising, ex uh, you know, pretty, pretty much. Uh, I guess you want to go to our services page? Yes, I will. So, uh, I, I mean, more or, less what you're seeing, well, more or less what you're seeing here is our website. Uh, this is the tablet version. 
Uh, so pr pretty much everything that we build, including all types of like every type of application that we build, is uh, is responsive, uh, which is a, a much more modern technique. And uh, you're, you're going to kind of see that any of the any of the things that you see from us, they're going to look great on mobile devices and tablet devices, and they're going to have some like unique functionality in each. Uh, on tablet here, we have like pretty pretty nice off canvas navigations. Um, so I'm actually going to go to services and and start with. I guess we can start with development, or do you want to start with design? Uh, do you want to scroll through the page? Yeah. Okay. All right. So, so anyways, to go 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 through some of the services, just so you guys can get a better idea of what we do. Uh, responsive web, basically, like that means that uh, you no longer are designing for for fixed uh, designing or developing for fixed resolutions or specific sizes. More or less, the thing like the modern way to build things now are that things should look great regardless of resolution, regardless of device, and that they should be adaptive enough to be pretty good looking. Um, we talk a little bit about, about the, the stuff that, that's, that we do in, in, our, in our process. Uh, information architecture, which is refining content and really considering how to make really effective tools for doing things or conveying certain ideas. Uh, we talk a little bit here about uh, user experience and UI, which is designing experiences so you know, we build software and we build we build websites, we build mobile applications. But at the end of the day, the way that people interact with these things is ultimately a, a, an experience. From at like initial contact, which might be a marketing website or something online, to the end experience where they might be using a product and interacting with it every day. Uh, even specific to their role, if a user, a customer, or say an admin, uh, both of them are going to have very unique experiences when they're using something like that. Uh, so outside of that, you have to pay like I guess pretty decent attention to how you design that experience for them so that it's intuitive, it's fun, and they really enjoy using it so that people want to, want to use it and actually are thankful to have it. Um, oh, I, I guess uh, just cross-browser, cross-platform, cross you know, that pretty much just means regardless of browser or regardless of operating system that you're pretty much going to get pretty good performance, pretty consistent results. Is this thing freaking out or what? Uh, you just skip that. Just skip it. And then uh, I'll skip with this other content. If you guys want to run and read everything on our website, you know you, should, you guys should visit it, which is www.createthebridge.com. Uh, we're we're going to be skipping past some of the stuff uh, at the, talk about the technology yeah. Well. I mean, at the bottom here, in under this section, which is primarily for development, we talk about some of the other things we build, which are web applications, mobile applications, and responsive e-commerce. Uh, we talk a little. Uh, we talk about some of the technologies we, we we're using. Uh, so HTML5 and CSS3 is pretty standard. Where you, oh, this screen, yeah, I actually didn't see that. <laughs> uh, we're, we're using like a, a lot of our projects are built using the Ruby programming language, and a, a lot of our web applications are using the, the Ruby on Rails uh, framework, which is pretty nice. Um, we make extensive use of SAS and CoffeeScript and Compass, uh, also Haml, which is all pretty cool information if you guys are engineers. Uh, and if you're not, it's also pretty cool because their logos look good. Um, I, I guess uh, if anything, we might bring up some examples of like some of some of our development projects and kind of like what the results were, so you can kind of see like what it materializes into. <laughs> Pass this one off to you. I guess a lot of it what goes into web development is, uh, I mean, for sure, there's all the technologies that go involved in. And uh, you know, I mean, the cool thing is that Joshua and Ty Joshua, Tyree, and Nathan are all you know, uh, I guess, software engineers, right? So the way that we would build our websites is exactly the same technologies that we're using to build a lot of the software. So we have a lot of flexibility as far as what we're doing. And uh, so, but I mean, so that's that's really cool. I mean, our websites are really fast. So, you know, we really optimize for performance. As you can see, we're also I mean, we're also working with responsive. So on our mobile on our, our mobile website looks really nice. If you guys you know check it out on your mobile, you guys saw that. We're experimenting with I guess new technologies in the way we do we're I guess uh, you experience a website on a mobile phone with the double navigation and things like that. Uh, but one of the other, I guess, most important things is uh, when we're first concepting a website, when we're working with the client, is also the information architecture, the user experience, and how you, you know, uh, the user flows when, I guess, a client or a, a potential customer would visit your website. And one of the, I guess, one of the really nice success stories that we have is with Realplex Wireless. Uh, do you guys know who, do you guys know who Realplex Wireless is, by any chance, anybody? Although brand, uh, 
Does that name resonate with anybody? Otho Brandt. He was like the mayor for like 20 years, or like the Callan a while back. Anyway, uh, he started this company. It's an internet wireless company. So they provide internet, internet wireless, uh, I mean wireless internet to companies, I mean to, to companies and to consumers around the Rio Grande Valley. And what makes them really unique is that, you know, they pretty much target companies that, I mean, well, I guess consumers or companies that can't, be, can't get internet from like Time Warner or, or so. Um, so they have a few, few towers around, you know, the, the Rio Grande Valley. And then I guess they're, cert well, just to backtrack a little bit. When we first met, met with them, uh, they had, I don't think Eduardo's here. I think he told me he was going to come. Uh, but they had a really bad site. <laughs> and so, they, you know, they spoke to us. You know, they wanted to reamp their company. Uh, uh, huh? Oh, hey, man, what's going on? <laughs> uh, he can vouch for me, right? Um, yeah, and so, you know, we sat down with them. And, re and every time we sit down with the client, we really try to speak to them about, you know, how can we, how can we build something for you that's going to get you the best return on your investment, right? And so this goes back a lot to like information architecture. So when we spoke to them, we asked them a series of questions that really kind of made them made us look into their uh, operations and how they were handling their sales process. And we realized that they were losing a lot of time uh, and money and going through this whole process if their customers would qualify for their service. So tip, a typical like sales call or sales phone would be that someone would call, they would find either they would I guess they would find them online or whatever, and then they would make a phone call. Uh, you know, they had to send out a representative, correct me if I'm wrong, Eddie, but, you know, if, uh, they would have to send out a representative to service a location and check if, you know, if they were within reach of, of their service towers, right? So obviously, you know, they had to spend a lot of gas and a lot of manpower in going through this whole uh, process to, to even just pre-qualify a potential lead, right? So when we spoke to them, we said, hey, what if we create a client-side application uh, on your website so that as soon as someone logs in, they can just input their address and then they can know right then and there if they qualify or not. So what we used was a Google Maps API. So this is pulling straight out of Google Maps. Uh, and then so if you go on here and you can type, you know, you can type your address and you do check now, and then it'll it'll, it'll call back with you know your location and say congratulations, um, you know you're within service, uh, you're within the area of our service. You know please provide us with your name, phone number, and uh, what is it, uh, email address, and we'll get back to you. So I mean. They're pre-qualified right then and there. So, uh, Sorry. yes. Sorry, you should have done both separately. I had to run five different of them. They were waiting for it. I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't catch what. Yes. Oh, yes, yes. So primarily, so what we were using here is that when we spoke to, to Eddie, they told us that at least like they would, their server, their towers would service a 30-mile 30, 30 radius. Uh, and then this would work primarily as like, a, I guess, as a, as, a, as a tool to help pre-qualify. And if they needed to go in there and actually like, you know, check to see if, if, they, if they needed to, you know, in case there was like any trees or anything like that. That, yeah, that they would have to do it, but primarily this kind of really did the trick. I mean, and then I'll I'll go ahead and, and talk about um, you know once once they they had this, uh, we were able to have a really great I mean uh, turnout where I think within the first sixty days we had a hundred uh, no I'm sorry a thousand and two hundred visitors and out of out of those twelve hundred uh, six hundred were unique visitors and out of those six hundred a hundred and fifty converted and they submitted their information so that they can get you know, so that, that they could be serviced, right? And I think last time we spoke to Eddie, we asked him how much, you know, uh, I guess how much their uh, monthly recurring revenue had increased, and they said it was roughly a bit, a bit more than ten thousand dollars a month. Uh, so I mean, it was, it was pretty nice. I mean, obviously they, they were really happy, uh, and so I mean, it was a really cool solution for their specific type of business model, right? But I mean. My point, my point is, is that we, every time we try to create a website for a client or just anything in general, we we'll always sit down with them and try to talk to them specifically about, you know, how can we best, you know, serve your company? How can we best get to get a, get a return on your investment? Uh, so it was pretty neat. I mean, it worked out worked out pretty nice. Uh, pretty much. Okay. Well, I guess I'm actually going to bring something else up. Um, you might have to hold on for a second. I was going to bring up a, a local. Uh, a local business center, the web application that we're building for them. Uh, this isn't far off actually from going going straight into production, but this is just so you can kind of see some of it. 
I guess this is the tablet version, so things are are gonna look pretty wide. <laughs> if anything, I'll, I'll just kind of show you. It's like uh, that looks not awesome. Yeah, I mean, uh, s some of this more or less. Uh, we we're we we're pretty much finalizing kind of like the the front end design for how a lot of it was gonna look, and that that was more or less what what was getting finalized. Um, so specifically, since this is a tablet resolution, it's something that's had uh, no work done on it. So you know, there might be like some things like this where you know, there's like some white area down here which doesn't look super great. Uh, but that's, I mean, you should pretty much kind of expect it. If anything, I'll actually log in with, uh, with my test email. Um, so more or less, oh, that actually doesn't work. <laughs> uh, let me log in with a different one. I mean, this is not going to work super great. Can we change the, the, the resolution? C can, uh, can, can I? I know we've tried this in the past, and I think it did work. But we can try it. Let me try this real fast. Graphics? Yeah. Graphics? Yeah. No. Oh, screen resolution. Let me try it. Can I try higher? Let's see. <laughs> right? Yeah. 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 No. Too big. Okay. Might be. No, well, I mean, that's it right there, to be honest. Okay. So. <laughs> I mean, this is still in development, right? So. <laughs> yeah. So, I, I mean, more or less, this is completely empty right now. But uh, it, it kind of had, like, some cool, like, voice over IP stuff. Uh, messages, which is to be creating messages for their clients and adding tags and all that. Uh, a pretty decent issue tracking system. Um, if anything, I, I might actually just show you show you how this works. So, uh, th I mean, this is a good example of a, of a, a Rails application. Um, something you can see right now that a, a, a local company will be using. Um, pretty much this is the admin view, so it has some more interesting things in it that you normally wouldn't see. Like, I'm going to select this right here and just say, this is uh, like model versioning, which pretty much is uh, pretty much is keeping kind of like a database of changes between the models. Um, so it creates this really, really specific auditing system. And uh, you can, like, s a good example is if, uh, if an admin or support staff actually deletes something, that your admin can retrieve that back from its last modeled, like, versioned model. Um, which is kind of like, you know, even if something was completely destroyed, you can still recover it uh, as long as you're using something like this. Um, a, like pretty much the only people who can do that are, are were the admins. An admin type area, which is kind of like just the users, uh, their roles, uh, changing them, their profiles. I actually go to my profile, um, which doesn't have like too much stuff in here because I'm not a customer. But uh, this, this is just so you can kind of see what these things look like, how they function. Uh, let me actually go back over here and hit up my account. Uh, edit, I mean, even, even uploading kind of like your avatar images and processing that, uh, that's kind of nice because I'm not going to actually upload something here. But, but you know, you can. Let me just cancel this because those are going to be too big. Um, Hit up area reservation. Actually, hit up dashboard. Some like some like basic feed stuff on on the home page, which just kind of like follows events as as they're being created on the home page, specific to whatever is going on. Um, yeah. Let me log out and actually create an account. So let me just sign up. I thought I already had done this the other day. I wanted up dropping the database for this thing like a day ago. So pretty much that's why I wasn't able to log in with, with what I normally use. So basically, uh, to, to pretty much kind of allow, because when we're talking about how, how to sell something like this, which is a virtual office application, um, the, the pretty much it's only going to require your email and your name, and somebody can create a, a guest account. And basically, the application right now is assigning different roles based on, on what somebody's doing or, or if they're paid or if they're not paid, et cetera. So the nice thing about that is the admin 
can have all their all of their staff or even remote staff create accounts and you can just adjust their roles rather than having to manually do anything else outside of that. Um, so basically, a user being able to create a guest account gives them the ability to look at an application, interact with it before they actually decide if they want to buy it. Along the same lines, this is kind of like exactly what they would be using if they wanted to be giving somebody, say, like free trial access for so many days or, or a month or something like that. Uh, it kind of just stacks in this, this message at the top of some of the views, which is welcome, view our plans to upgrade. And it... Uh, and it doesn't let you do too much. I mean, if you try to do something, you actually wind up getting authorization messages. So it's just going to have some mock data in there for them to look at. If anything, I'll actually go through the process so I've become a customer. There we go. Actually, the rest is the same. So pretty much, oh, God, I have to fill something in here. So this will authenticate. Okay. So basically, I, I, I basically subscribed with mock data using uh, Stripe's API, which is a really nice, robust payment processing, uh, I guess, platform if you're going to be looking into it in the future. Uh, really nice, especially if you're a developer. So I'm, act I'm officially a customer. And uh, I mean, I, pretty much since it's a business center, uh, there's like some shared spaces like conference rooms. So you, there's pretty much like like a system in there for reserving conference rooms. I'm actually just gonna create, yeah, I'm gonna create an event. So you, you can you create one, you have something there. So you, so that that's when you're gonna have like say your meeting. Uh, if you want to just, no, let me actually, if you want to extend the time, you can kind of just extend the time for how long you want to reserve the space for. And uh, even if you want to kind of move it around, you can just kind of move that around to change your your event. Say you, somebody else makes another a new event and they're trying to schedule it on the same time that you are. Um, it's pretty much just not going to allow that. So pretty much, it, like this, this pretty much kind of frees up a lot of how people are going to be able to reserve space in that, I guess, in that facility, and uh, kind of view like when things are open, um, when how much time, like you know, kind of use it as they need, which is what virtual virtual offices were pretty much built around. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna sk I'll skip back over to met I'll skip over to issues. Did I actually create one? No. And I'll keep this short so we can keep going. Um, basically, issue tracking. So as people have problems, they, ca they can kind of do stuff. And you just get like something that kind of looks like this with a status there that pretty much their support staff or admin can make adjustments to and just ability to kind of destroy that if you need to. And uh, the fully fleshed out kind of, kind of uh, profile area has uh, just some other things in here, like updating payment information and being able to change their plans. And this will just correctly change their subscription plan and prorate their stuff as necessary. Or if they need, a, if they need a, to, to purchase additional reservation hours, they can. So I'm actually just going to log out of this thing. And that's kind of like, like what, a, what a Rails web application looks like. And this, this is an example of some of the development that, that we do at our company. Uh, so a lot of the development work that we're getting is, uh, well, I mean, I guess one of the advantages of our company is that, you know, the, the way we'll position ourselves and sell ourselves is that uh, we do everything in-house. We don't outsource any of the development work or none of the design work. Um, and so that's a, a huge uh, selling point for our, on our side because a lot of the companies that are creative agencies in the area that say they do a lot of these things, they always end up outsourcing uh, their, I mean, the development work and then it just turns out for a bad project, right? I think even this project itself, we picked it up from a, from another agency that had tried to build something, but then you know they didn't, they couldn't, end, they couldn't deliver the final product. Uh, so we have a lot of uh, clients like that. Did you want to talk about this? No, no, I was oh. going to say we just jump on to design. Oh, sure. Um, well, I mean, just to even talk about some of the clients. I mean, yeah, uh, this is a client out of Mission. We've got another clients from the area. I guess a lot of what. Um, for our design, I mean, we work with a couple of companies from here. From uh, we work with the Kamori, uh, we work with a couple of dentistries, lawyers, uh, other restaurants. Um, I guess for some of the, did you want to talk about some of the design? Yeah, sure. Why not? Go. We actually just just go to our, and then go to portfolio, and then go to. So I'll let Sarah just run through this and just quickly so you guys can see some of the work that we've done in the past. 
this is an, an advertising campaign that we did for Komori, just run through it. I mean, we, we, we went through a whole research process where we spoke to their customers and talked to them about what was it about Komori that they just really loved. And then based on that, we came up with a few concepts of advertising campaigns. And he ended up choosing this one, and then that's the one uh, we ended up rolling with. But, and that's still live right now. It's right off the, uh, the expressway. Keep going, Sada. Uh, 26 Gems is an education startup out of Austin that we're creating the we well we created the whole brand for them and we're also creating their uh, their software application uh, well web application and uh, and like, like a couple of our team our, our team members are co-founding in that company and uh, if any of you were at the Region One Technology Conference on South Padre Island you might have even seen us there with 26 Gems also oh, almost out of time oh okay <laughs> yeah or just yeah. I mean, just keep keep going through this so you can see all of it. Yeah, I mean, this is straight off our website, cre uh, www.createthebridge.com. So all that's in there. So the dentistry out of Harlingen, uh, full brand work. Just, uh, did some, had some fun with this project, especially with that. Uh, bon Orteño is a chicken restaurant in, uh, in uh, close to Mission. Had some fun with this one, too. So I mean, again, uh, our portfolio is straight off of our website. So if you want to look at it, you, you can. Um, I mean, I, I guess so. I mean, well, the cool thing is that you know we, we've been able to acquire customers from from the Rio Grande Valley, but we've also been able to acquire some of the customers, like I mentioned. Uh, you know, 26 gems from out of Austin. We've also been working closely with uh, Clue. They presented here about maybe like two, two months ago, I believe. Uh, mo mobile startup. So our company is doing the, the creating the mobile application for them. Uh, and they're well, they're from here and they're from Austin as well. Also from other companies out of Houston, California. Uh, we've even got, been able to get a project out of Montreal. That was that was fun. Um, am I missing something else? Dallas. Uh, so I mean, it's been pretty 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 cool. Oh yes, out of Mexico. <laughs> Forgot about that one. Uh, so, are we co-factoring this or what's up? Yeah. Do you want to talk about that? Um, just, just Sarah. Well, Sa Sarah primarily uh, led this whole, this whole, um, this whole event that we had uh, last week. So we're gonna let her kind of just talk about it a little bit. Uh, yeah, so we kind of approached the, the Office of Continuing Education at UTPA, and uh, we really wanted to create an event that uh, benefited um, uh, the community, and we wanted to bring technology um, to the forefront um, to get people excited about it and promote the classes that um, we were going to be offering in the summer with continu continuing education. Uh, so Code Factory was an event where we each did a dem demonstration. Um, I did a demonstration on SVG animation. Luis did one on video um, editing. Um, Nathan on web application um, development and um, Tyree, our other member, did it on um, leap motion exploration. Um, so, uh, it <laughs> um, do you want to speak a bit about your your demonstration? Sure. Uh, if anything, one of the things uh, uh, I guess um, I, I don't see anybody here that was there. Um, I specifically covered in my module uh, how I built how I basically built a s small Twitter app and Instagram applications. So I could access their APIs using uh, uh, OAuth as a way to authenticate, and then in in this in the 30 minutes, explain to them all of the code, how to how to get get the same credentials themselves, and how to completely reproduce the application. So I think anybody who might be interested in the Ruby language or the or the Ruby on Rails framework is really going to find it very helpful. Uh, we're going to be producing some blogs, kind of talking about each each of our projects. We're going to be open sourcing the code for each one of them. Um, so here, it, it, this was pretty much using uh, the APIs to be pulling content um, for, from Instagram. It was pulling use the user the men, uh, user stream content stuff that we were publishing. It was pulling stuff with UTPA Code Factory hashtag or Code Factory hashtag. On Twitter, we were pulling anything that mentioned our our page, which was uh, at Code Factory underscore, and it was aggregating it all into into this Rails application. Um, anyways, this is kind of this is staged online right now. And the cool thing about it is that while people were there, they were able to kind of see, like, you know, they were able to just, you know, we were encouraging people to be interact, like, being interactive with the event, building content as it was happening, and then being able to kind of see, like, 
like you know what is like what is the industry like what is this work like and and what kind of things do you build uh, if anything um in the future we were going to be f like fully, more fully extending this thing out so you know it would be more interesting uh, if anything i wanted to do the the build the pretty much primarily the day before but it was pretty nice to kind of keep it small so somebody could actually reproduce and this type of application themselves you know, Luis wound up creating a really nice uh, a product video for Realplex that unfortunately we couldn't play, <laughs> but uh, but it was pretty cool. And uh, Leap Space Exploration was uh, Joshua Tyree, um, one of our other co-founders. Um, he originally worked at a while back. He worked at Riot Games, which some people might be familiar for the as a studio that produced League of Legends. Uh, outside of that, he he founded his own uh, his own gaming studio and wound up selling. Uh, is selling pretty much his intellectual property for quite a bit a little bit later, and now he's, he's, he's uh, one of the other engineers on our team. Uh, so he pretty much created a Flappy Bird clone uh, themed around Code Factory using uh, the Leap Motion uh, motion controller to interact with it. If you're not familiar with Leap Motion, it more or less is a small device that reads uh, you know, gestures, like your hands pretty much just floating in the air. So you know, he kind of showed people how to build like a, a small game uh, something like pretty much like a complete Flappy Bird clone with a, a peripheral that is non-standard and a small amount of time using the Unity game engine. Um, you know, like uh, uh, Sarah was talking about SVG animations and more or less why people should move, move away from Flash and uh, why like programmatically building out animations these days is a much more effective or efficient way to be doing it. Um, and, and at the end of the day, all of those things were pretty much to get kids excited about technology and uh, we also are, we also are going to be, be be I guess pushing some classes through the continuing education department uh, in case people are kind of interested in doing some of the things that that they see us doing or if they like the way our stuff looks and they want to know how to kind of produce something similar. And and this was Code Factory guys, by the way. Uh, you know, if you if you get a chance, like check it out, uh, speak about it, anything else. I mean, pretty much. Uh, the, it's this domain was on like uh, that you just saw where all the content was aggregated at was codefactory.herokuapp.com. Uh, maybe we should put that up somewhere. <laughs> and uh, and uh, like you guys will probably like see, get the link somewhere somewhere later. But uh, we were just going to be extending this out completely to be a nice reference for the whole event, and we're hoping to be continuing uh, continuing on having these events with uh, UTPA and the continuing education department. Um, uh, pr pretty much, you know, where to find us. This is, uh, you know, the co-founding team, our names, our phone numbers, emails, uh, LinkedIn, and a couple of our social networks here. And I guess our last slide is... Oh, this is it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, what's next? Okay. Um, do you, do you want to jump in on this one, too? Oh, questions? Yeah, sure. Shoot. Well, uh, I d do you mind if I jump in on this one? Yeah, go for it. Okay. Well, y y you know, uh, like Luis had mentioned, he ha he had like uh, prior to Josh and myself partnering in, we have been doing private consulting for uh, almost five years now, uh, and Luis himself he, like a little more than three years, right? So uh, we'd already had some ki some experience, more or less, on kind of r like running our own like small shops and 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 how we're going to be doing things. But for for quite a while, I, I think uh, we were very interested in pretty much. Um, you know, how startups structure their companies and how they ran. Um, so I, I guess, like right now, a lot, a lot of our, like, like business team is uh, myself, Joshua, and, and Luis. And uh, pretty much like the, the way that, that we're structuring our company now is as a, pretty much as a C corporation because we, we plan on accepting, a, I guess, raising investment rounds uh, sometime probably this year. Um, anyways, that, like, that's really important, especially for some of the tax benefits. Uh, I would say anybody who is really getting into business, especially for somebody who might be producing software products, uh, really knowing how you could be structuring, uh, I guess, like not just one type of legal entity, but uh, several, so that things are tax efficient, would really help you out quite a bit. 
Um, I think not knowing anything about uh, not knowing anything about business is, is going to be pretty fatal for anybody who wants to entrepreneur. Um, so I would still say just start. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, just j just starting is like the best way to get in there. I mean, uh, don't make mistakes in your taxes. <laughs> Yeah, sure uh, I mean, that's like the only advice I would really give, like, really, really, I mean, if you don't know how to do them, get, get a CPA, don't even try. I mean, as, uh, even as far as, like, you know, building, like, tech startups, right, there's always, like, a core, I guess, core members that always, in, like, start uh, a tech startup, I mean, you have to have someone, you either build uh, or you sell, right? Yeah. So you have to have someone who builds, you have to have an engineer, you have to have a designer, and you have to have someone that can sell your product. So it's always those three things make, make for a really great team. Uh, and when, so when, uh, when we first started, it was just myself, uh, Nathan, and Josh, and well, they could build, I could design, and we both kind of always knew about um, uh, just selling and business in general. And as far as our co-founding team, you know, all, all the members that come into our team, we, we always try to shoot for elasticity in our skill sets. Um, and by that, I mean that, uh, you know, we'll always, like Sara, I mean, she's primarily a designer, right? And I, I think the first time, that she, the first week that she came to work with our company, we asked her, hey, when are you going to get a sell? Right, yeah. uh, you know, because you know, if you're a co-founder, you have to be selling, you have to be, you know, getting a sell. And our Tyree, our other engineer, the first week that he came down, he, I think, the first, like, in the third day, he, he, uh, he went to go get his car washed, and then uh, afterwards, he said, "Hey, I can, you know, I think these guys could be really benefit from my company." He called the manager up and tried to sell them there on the phone, right? So, I mean, for sure, I mean, for if you're a co-founder, you're in tech startups, you have to be selling. You have to be selling. I mean, even even if you don't even have a product yet, uh, you should be selling. You should pre you should be pre-selling. And uh, there's some really, I guess, great content out there. Have you guys heard of Close.io? Anybody? Close.io. All right. Well, you should really check out their website. You can check. You should check out their blog. What's that guy's name? I forgot. Uh, anyway, the, the, the founder of that, of that uh, application, he has a lot of content on his website talking about how to do sales, how to do pre-sales. So, I mean, for any of you guys who are right now are starting a business, a business and want to learn more about going about, you know, getting sales and things like that, you should definitely check out his blog. Uh, it has a lot of great content on there. Uh, I, I was going to say, we, we, uh, I asked Sarah to bring up a, a blog that she published when she first came on, which was in March. During spring break, she spent her, I mean, I mean uh, if, you, if you don't know, she is still currently a, a, a no no okay she just recently ended her contract as being a professor at the at, i mean yeah <laughs> so yeah i ended my contract in may uh with utpa uh teaching uh graphic design and visual communication courses and uh during my spring spring break is when i started the onboarding process uh, with create the bridge and um so this is generally like a, a the, the things that i went through <laughs> It was a good example of somebody coming afresh to a company and kind of like how the, how much of a major transition it is. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know she 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 th she puts up some of our best quotes up here. I mean, uh, getting to uh, GSD is uh, one of our favorite. Uh, getting shit done, and basically that means that you know um, uh, that you just have to just GSD things all the time. Um, you know, like even if, like because some of our team were engineers, but we do we do go out and we make we do a lot of sales efforts. And that's because you have to keep companies alive, or you have to make things happen. Or if you want to get paid a lot, you have to make, you, you have to make sure the money's there. Um, that's part of entrepreneurship. Um, always be selling. Uh, <laughs> th there's a couple of things that, that, that we say. Uh, if you guys have ever seen, have you guys have ever seen that, that movie, uh, Glenn, Glenn, Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross? They talk about the ABCs, always be closing. Yeah, closers are closers. I mean, if anything, sometimes uh, uh, around, uh, like while we're working, Somebody would be like, can I sit? And I'd be like, sittings for closers. <laughs> um, yeah. So, 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 you know, and we have a spin on that one, which is always be closing, always be coding, and always be selling. Always be shipping. Yeah, always be shipping as well. Yeah, how about this one? I really like this one. Yeah. Oh. Two, Did, two. I mean, you should give your. Oh, yeah. So, so I've been cross chain and pretty much um, selling and um, some uh, front end design and stuff like this. But this is one of the quotes that's constantly said in the office when um, when someone said to be slacking off a little. Uh, when you're in a tank um, with sharks, you only have um, taste for shark. So um, you always got to be keeping up with everybody else. Um. So, so <laughs> and, and to kind of talk about like, like why we even said that in the beginning, which is so every person was kind of kind of expected to be a master of their domain. Uh, you know, jo like the developers, like great engineers. Our designers, great designers. People doing marketing, great, great marketers. But outside of that, like that isn't specifically what makes somebody a shark. 
being very abstract in terms of building tools, of you know, thinking out of the box. Um, everything with the continuing education department. I mean, that kind of got like hacked together, you know, and Sarah's free time like very s not long, like pretty a fast. Few weeks. Because mm -hmm. we we wanted a meeting with her at the end of April, and obviously like a few weeks later we had this major event, like this pretty big event of like a hundred people. Mm -hmm. So you know that was a really short time period to just get get something done. Uh, you know, some people want to let things sit for a while, but you know, if anything, just get it, getting out there and making it happen is the best way to to make it happen. Um, 